Hey everyone, and welcome to another Absolute Cocoa video with me, John Parker. I'm sorry I haven't been recording recently. I think there's been like four or five weeks without an actual video being uploaded. Uh, I've been quite busy in my life, university and whatnot, and also I did have a video for you, but unfortunately, the editing was taking so long, and um, I didn't think it was very inspiring. It was just a video on um, me doing thumbnails. I didn't think it was going to help. I think some of you probably wouldn't even care. So I haven't bothered to upload that one or edit it. I think I might scrap it now. So today I've got a brand new type of video for you. It's um, a programming video. My first ever, actually. I wanted to show you guys something that I've... Um, like to use, I like to use a lot in my programs when I develop the software. And by the way, I'm a Windows programmer, I'm not a Linux or a Mac programmer. I don't have any interest at all in doing them. You're probably screaming at me now, going, oh, you know, just, just cross compatible, cr cross uh, operating systems. Why, why aren't you, uh, you know, focusing on other operating systems? You know, you can't just stick with Windows all the time. You can't keep all your eggs in one basket. Well, I like Windows and I think it's a great API. I mean, it has a great API. I blah, 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 blah. Well, I like Windows and it has a great API. And, um, it just feels more comfortable to um, to program in it, I think. Um, it's a good environment to program in, I should say. I'm getting my words mixed up today because I just I don't know how to speak on camera. <sighs> oh well. One day, I suppose. I'll get better at it. Okay, so as you can see on the screen right now, I'm in Visual Studio and I've gone ahead and set up a very basic project. Now, the project is um, a CLR blank project. That means that I'm using C++ slash CLI, the managed C++ variant, um, to program uh, with. And that, I, the reason I program a lot in C++ slash CLI rather than using either C++ or C Sharp is because I like to use both .NET Framework and the Win32 API and balance the two. I like to use um, aspects from both. Um, like for doing Windows and all that, I'll do the .NET Framework. I use the .NET Framework um, Windows Forms. Um, and for um, messing around with Windows and implementing things like task dialogues, which I'm going to be showing you today, and implementing things like the taskbar, um, progress um, indicators and overlay icons, and messing around with um, all sorts of things. If I wanted to something that's advanced in terms of what you can do in C Sharp and what you can't do in, um, and what you can do in unmanaged code, uh, I like to use both because that means I can jump between the two with, with quite it's, it's it's quite easy to there's not there's not very much difficulty if I'm in C sharp I'm using interrupt to do managing with the Win32 API or if I'm in the Win32 API I can't use any of the .NET framework tools so I like to use um, C++ CLI because it's a really good language however this um, can be done in pure C++ or C um, so yeah. Let's get started, shall we? So I've just got a very basic environment at the moment. I've only just literally set it up. I called it Task Dialog Demo. I'm just going to go ahead and set my um, configuration to 64-bit. This is a 64-bit computer, and I like to do that. Also, uh, I don't need to use the .NET Framework for this thing, so I probably won't need to add a ref any references to it. But what I will be doing is adding my dependencies. Now, for the t um, Task Dialog, I need to add um, the ComCTL32 library um, file because um, that's the file that has the uh, common controls which of course at the same time is the um, library that deals with task dialogues and whatnot. So I'm adding that now and also I probably will be needing the do library that I might not do. Depends. Probably will. I'll, I'll add it there anyway. The manifest I've got a little um, bit of not code, <laughs> a little bit of um, XML here just to stick into the manifest to include the common control library version 6. I don't know why they didn't make it that that, def that, that the default common control in, in uh, common controls library in Windows. I never understood that. Oh, Microsoft, in your confusingness. Yes, I just made a new word up. I'm going to turn off debugging. I really don't like coming in on it. Phil, it makes the file bigger. I know it's useful. If I require it, I'll turn it back on later, but I'll just turn it off. I don't need to use the console. I'll be using Windows, and because I can't bother to use the win main function to um, as an entry point, I'll change it to main, um, because I'm just lazy like that. 
Okay, just making sure everything's fine. Now I'm going to just turn on some up. I'm going to change my optimization settings to one I like. I'm going to, uh, I think it's minimum size, fast code. I turn off security checks because I'm naughty like that. Um, and I think that's fine. I don't think I need to change changes to that. So I'm going to click OK and save. Okay, okay then. So let's get on to the actual code. So you'll probably you probably know about task dialogs. If you don't. I'm just going to go and throw some images up on the screen for you right now. I think you've probably already seen them, depending on where I put them in the editing. Um, but they're very simple. They've been in since Vista and they've all gone all up to um, Windows 10. Very useful. They look nice. They're an alternative to the message box API that's been in Windows since the dot. Um, and today I want to show you some of um, the standard task dialog. And then I want to go into some more uh, hidden stuff, the undocumented icons, for example, and also messing around with some of the icons to make them look very close. We might even try and make a dialogue that looks similar, not exactly the same, but similar to the user account control dialogue, because I do know that that uses the undocumented side of it, of, the, of the task dialogue to create that um, appearance on screen. Um, I won't be able to do um, things like drawing pictures on the task dialog or bold text. Unfortunately, although Microsoft themselves can do that, I can't. That's not part of the API. And I think, even though I have checked um, user account controls um, consent.exe file, I have checked does it use the task dialog API, but I don't think um, those actual um, dialogs you see are using altogether. That API to create that um, window because that picture in the bold text that's not possible in TaskDog unless there's um, a hidden thing that I, I just can't see. But no one online's found out how to do it and I don't know how to do it. So, um, but anyway, enough getting into the chit chat. Let's go on into the actual code. So I'm going to go ahead and create a C file and I'm going to go ahead and call it main um, because I've got no other <laughs> name to give it. I'm going to go ahead and include the standard Windows library. And I'm also going to go ahead and include the common controls like um, header file. Create my entry point. Oops. That's another thing. I might make a lot of mistakes in terms of spelling uh, or syntax. I do realise these. I will probably attempt to fix them immediately, but I'm I like to look at the screen when I type, so I sometimes make mistakes. Um, don't need that anymore. Okay, so to create a task dialog, it's very simple. All you've got to do is use the function task dialog. This is for a standard task dialog, it's a very basic one. Um, as you can see, it gives you the, the definition for it for you for it up. It gives you the definition for it out at front, and I'll just quickly go through them. That's the handle to the owner window. I haven't got an owner window, so I'm gonna leave that as no. That's the handle to an instance. I haven't got an instance. Well, I probably have, I could make one up, but I'm not gonna. Uh, that's handled to the window title. I'm going to call it uh, test task dialog. Notice I put the L in front. It is using Unicode strings. Task dialog does not support um, multi byte characters. It only supports wide char characters. So wide characters. Um, just as a quick side note there. Uh, the main instruction, I can just call this is a task dialog. Content, I'll put um, you are now looking at a task dialog in Windows 7. Slash n slash n. This can also be used in Windows Vista and above. Doesn't quite make sense, but we'll leave it at that. The task dialog common button flags is what common buttons you want. That's OK, cancel, yes, no, retry. I don't think I've got continue on there actually. Well, we can find out by going TDCBF, which stands for Task Dialog Common Button Flags, and you've got Cancel, Close, No, OK, Retry, and Yes. Those are the standard buttons, and that's the only ones you can use in the standard Task Dialog function. I'm going to go with the standard OK button, but you can put whatever you like. Um, here we go. The icon I'm going to leave as Null for now, and then the actual return, that that's to um, signify um, what button they clicked. I'm just going to leave that as null. I'm not actually going to check what button they pressed um, for now. So I'm going to go ahead and build that. Hopefully there won't be any errors. But knowing Visual Studio, it'll probably come up with something daft. No, it didn't. It succeeded. Good. So here I've got the folder. I'm going to go into the release folder. And here we go. Now when I run it, yay, I get a standard task dialog. This is what they look like. You've seen it before. Um, and this is without an icon, without any fancy smancy stuff. 
it's just a standard test dialog. So, and remember by the way, you can pause the video at any time if you see something that you don't understand. So, I'm going to now go ahead and introduce an icon. Now, the icons that you can't is TD underscore, you see error, information, shield and warning. They are the four standard icons that you can use. I'm going to put it on information to show you what that looks like. You've probably already seen it before, but I've noticed that many programs don't use the information icon on their test dialogs. I'm not entirely sure why, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite useful. Notice that you heard the information icon from a message box sound effect when I, when I run the program. The next one that I could show you is the warning icon. Now, this one you will have seen if you've tried programming or trying, sorry, um, installing a driver that's not signed. There you go, there's the uh, sound effect. That's like if you'd have, um, it would say here, like, uh, what was it? Uh, Windows needs a signed driver. Windows requires a signed driver. If you've never seen those messages, if you search it on search on cellular, search driver signature enforcement on Google, you'll get that type of dialog. That's what they used for that. The icon, I mean. Um, error is a standard error icon if you've ever tried um, doing something in Windows that it doesn't like. That's what you get. And also the final one, which I don't really see often uh, in programs, the shield icon to denote something is using administrative rights or something is of a security issue. Notice there is no sound effect when that is played, but you can, if you want to, call the message beep function to um, signify one of the information error or warning sounds, um, if you so wish. But that's what it looks like. That's the standard shield. Now. That's literally pretty much all you can do uh, with a, a task dialog function. I can go ahead and do um, add another flag here, the cancel button. So there you go. So now we've got OK and cancel when I show that. Um, hang on. There we go. So I can choose another one. The default button is chosen for the default button is the one on the left, which is OK in this case. Um, and I can pick that up by using that parameter, which I set to null. If I make an integer and call it um, button pressed. Oops, how are you going to make mistakes? Uh, actually, yeah, I'll leave it not there. And I put a pointer to it, a reference to it, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I have different terminologies for these type of things, even though they're probably incorrect. And now what I can do is I can actually check to see what button was pressed. So if it was OK, then make another task dialog. Um, uh, you pressed OK. Fantastic. Fantastic. And this one we only need to put the OK button. We don't really need an icon. We don't really need to do any of the checks. I am making mistakes, aren't I? No, it's fine. Else, if they're doing anything else, then go ahead and say you pressed cancel. Yeah. Oh dear. Now when I build that, when I click OK, yeah, you pressed OK, I click cancel, you press cancel. Oh dear. Now that's the standard um, standard API for it if we're using a basic task dialog. But what if you want to make something bigger better? What if you want to make it so that they when they um, see a task dialog they can click on cross. Oh hello. Now ah, that's interesting that is. If you specify the cancel button, you automatically get a cross. Now I didn't know that, although I should have guessed it. <laughs> um, you notice when I click on one of these buttons, because it hasn't got a cancel button, it's got no cross. But what if, what happens if when you have a test order and you have only an OK button, you want to put a cross there and show the icon there. In this case, there is no icon, but you get the picture. You might show that icon there that you can see at the bottom in the taskbar. Well, you can do that using the task dialog indirect function, which allows you to specify a configuration of how the task dialog is um, to be presented to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrap all this, bye bye, and make a task dialog config structure. I'm going to call it CFG because I like to call it that. And I'm going to set the first parameter to the size of the task dialog because the first parameter I believe, yep, is CB size, which is I don't know why they have to specify that, but there you go, size of task dialog there. Oh, well, I probably do know why, but I've just never understood why they just 
just ignore me. That's just um, I have. Anyway, <laughs> so here's all the different options you've got for the task dialog config. You've got the size of the structure, which we've already set to task dialog config there. You've got how many buttons pressed, how many radio buttons pressed, the width of the dialog, the common buttons, any flags, any style changes, um, a handle to a footer icon, uh, a handle to the instance of the application, a handle to the main icon, um, the parent window, uh, callback data, um, the default button that's pressed, the default radio button that's pressed, um, the actual buttons, any custom buttons you want, uh, the callback function, custom radio buttons, um, the collapse control text, which is the, um, the little um, more info button. If what the text is displayed there, so like more info. Um, content, the actual content uh, that I see on the task dialog. Expanded control text, which is where it's like less info. And uh, expanded information, the actual information that's displayed when you press those buttons. Um, footer, the footer icon. That's the standard icon. The PSZ is the ones that are standard to the dialog. Um, present in image res.dll. Uh, the main icon, also the standard one. Um, the main instruction. Verification text is the checkbox text. And finally, the window title, which comes up in the title. So I'm going to set that one first. I'm going to call it test task dialog again. I'm going to call the main instruction. I'm going to set that to uh, this is a test dialog, a, a test, test task dialog. By the way, if I'm going too fast for you, I do apologise. There is a documentation of this on the Microsoft website. I'm just going through the standard stuff first before we go into the uh, undocumented stuff. Uh, the main icon, I'm going to use the standard one. I don't have a custom one to use for this mouse. What am I doing? Making a string for. Um, I want TD information, an example. Flags, I don't have any at the moment, so I'm going to leave it as null because we will be using it in one ticket of it. Common buttons, TDCBF. OK. Anything else I want to define? What am I missing? Content, yep. Um, welcome to this configured task dialog. Should put a dot at the end of grammar. Ah, oh, so nothing else now. I'm going to call the task dialog indirect function now. And when I call this, it will ask me for a pointer to the config structure. And then what button was pressed, what radio button was pressed, and whether the verification checkbox was checked. I don't have any of the necessities for those to be defined, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a pointer to the construct and put everything else as null. And there we go. And I want to build this. Yep. I never am sure whether or not I'll get that right. There you go. As you can see, it looks just like the standard one that we um, called. But now, to add that close button that I wanted and that icon there. The way I do that is by simply specifying. No, as I said, I could do the cancel button trick. Or I could put in the flags, tdf underscore allow dialog cancellation. When I build that and run it, I now get the lovely little close button without the cancel button. And as you see, I also get the icon at the top there. So there you go. There's the standard um, the standard configured task dialog. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot more you can do with the flags, by the way. You've got, um, what else? We've got callback timeout. Uh, every 200 milliseconds, this will be, if you specify this, it will send uh, to the callback, which we'll look at in a moment. It will send a um, an event to say the timer was triggered after every 200 milliseconds. Um, can we minimize? Specify the minimize button. It'll actually show that. Uh, there you go, minimize. Um, noted, by the way, if you don't specify that, if you just have can be minimized, it will show both buttons. It won't disable the close button. Which is a bit of a weird thing, but huh, what can you do? Microsoft Uh Enable hyperlinks, whether or not you want to use any hyperlinks. You can actually use HTML hyperlinks in your text. Um, Expanded by default is for the more info, less info, whether or not that's expanded automatically. Expand footer area, because no, by normally, norma, yeah. normally the expanded part um, goes where the content is. By specifying that flag, you're pushing it underneath the footer when I click the button. And now default radio button, 
I think that's the standard actually, because when I was doing some tests yesterday, for preparing for this video, I specified radio buttons and they weren't um they weren't selected at all. Odd. With a weird flag. I suppose that's um in case something goes wrong with it, I I don't know. Um no set foreground, that doesn't bring I think that's yeah, there you go. Don't call set foreground window and activating the dialogue. Actually, does that give an explanation? No, it doesn't. It's alright. So, um, doesn't bring the window to the front. By default. Doesn't mean that it won't always go to the front now. Position relative to the window, that's if you, I think, have the parent window. It puts it relative to the window that's opened. RTL layer, of course, is for right to left um, languages. Show Marquee progress bar, whether the progress bar should be shown, and um, it should be for the Marquee one, where it's like sliding across. Show progress bar, standard progress bar, size the content, size the window to fit the content. Use command links, you know, I'm sure you know what command links are, those things with the little arrow when you press them with like buttons. No icon, same thing but without any icon with the arrows. I use the use a, um, a custom icon for the footer or use a custom icon for, icon for main. And finally, um, whether or not the verification flag, the actual um, checkbox is automatically checked when it's shown. Those are the standard flags. That has hurt my mouth saying all that. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is go into the undocumented icons that I really wanted to show you. And how long have I been going for? 21 minutes. This is a very long video. I apologise everyone. I'll have to split this up. Okay. Um, right, what we're going to do is we're going to specify a callback function to be able to manage icons better with task dialogs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a standard one here, but I'm not going to actually do anything with it to start with. Now, to specify a callback for a task dialog, what you need to have is it needs to return a hate result, add it to a result, and it's going to be a callback type, and I'm going to call it PD callback. It doesn't have to be called that, but I can do it. Um, the handle to the task dialog, um, a new uh, unsigned integer for the notification that I'm getting back from the task dialog, uh, wparam, lparam, this is just the parameters that go with the notification. And then finally the long pointer, which is the um, callback data parameter that we have in config. We don't actually need to use that, we can ignore it. I'm going to go ahead and return a normal OK status back to say it is hunky dory, nothing went wrong there. Now, in the, oops, in the config, I'm going to go ahead and specify PF callback to be a pointer to that function. Now if I run this, no difference. But I can, if I wanted to, specify if the notification that's received by this callback is tdn underscore created, which is the created callback, but not when, when the dialog is actually being created uh, internally by the common control library, I can go ahead and specify a basic message box to show up. Um, I wonder if actually specifying how to do there would work. Sorry, I talked to myself. Um, so as you can see, I'm just basically making a very basic message box to show when it gets created, so we'll know when it's been created. I don't know if this is going to work though, because I've just specified a handle to the window, and it hasn't been the window hasn't been created yet. Well, it has been created, but it hasn't been shown. Probably it will still work, but yeah, it has. So there we go. We now know that it's been created. So when I click close, it goes ahead and shows that dialog that it's just created internally. Um, but we don't need to use that. We don't need to show a message box when we create. That's pointless. Um, but what we can do is something very clever. I'm going to leave that for a bit because I want to get into actually un the actual undocumented icons. For the PSZ main icon parameter, not the HMI main icon parameter, you can actually specify other values rather than the standard ones that are there. I believe in Visual Basic, there's some undo the undocumented ones I'm going to show you is actually documented, but I could be wrong. Don't com don't um, quote me on that. If you put well, actually no, if I put a mouse over this, you'll notice it says hash define td information icon make it resource w minus three. The make it resource w part is the actual part that tells um, Windows what resource in image res .dll to use. Minus numbers are the ones that it knows as standard for test dialog. Minus three is the information icon. I believe minus one is warning, minus two is error, and minus four is the shield. 
If I do something different though, if I do my int resource w, it has to be in a code remember, minus 5, that's going below the standard icons, and I save that and build it. When I run it, what does that look like to you guys? That's right. That is the user account control style um, for a test dialog. And I can change the main instruction to something similar to it. In fact, if I pull up um, task dialog, uh, oops, not control, just task dialog, something similar to that, that is someone trying to create a task dialog for Windows XP. But if I put the user account control in, there you go, that's what I wanted. So, do you want to allow the following program to make changes to computer? So, if I go ahead and put that in, I want to allow the following program to make changes to this computer, question mark, build, run. Right, there you go. So, that is effectively the task, the uh, user can control. The reason it's squished is because we haven't specified a width, and I believe Microsoft does do, rather, um, when they call this function. Let's go ahead and specify a width. I'm going to leave it as 200. Build that. Oops. Run it. And there you go. That's the correct size for it. Now, of course, we could put lots of information here, like an application that's trying to run and whatnot. Right. right. Um, so the next icon that we've got on our list, is we do minus 6, is the warning icon. So there you go. You see what I'm looking, showing you now? Those are the two standard user account control icons, but there's more. If I do um, minus 7, I get the security error icon. And if I do minus 8, I get one that's very rarely used, the green tick. There's also one more that is used in Windows Vista, I think, but not in Windows 7, minus 9 which is the grey, but I think it's a slight greenish colour. Then again, I'm colour blind, so I don't know. So there you go. You now that's a standard blue and yellow shield as well. So those are the numbers, minus 5 to minus 9 in order, gradient blue, um, <laughs> yellow one, uh, red error, green tick, and grey, gradient. So those are the that's the order of the icons using the make it resource W macro. Um, but there's more. If I go to minus five, so this is this one. You notice in user account control when an when a verified publisher's program is being ran, but it is not of publisher Microsoft Windows. That icon is not that icon. It's actually the blue shield icon, which is not available anywhere, not even in the undocumented API. Uh, undocumented icons, sorry. It's not visible anywhere in um, those icons list. In fact, I could go below minus 9 and it wouldn't load. Um, if I go minus 10. See, it doesn't work. It doesn't run. Crashes. Well, it doesn't crash, but it just doesn't work. It has to have an indirect, probably just returns with an error. By the way, there is one more icon, minus 100. I um, don't know why you'd use this one, but it's basically just a task dialog icon. I suppose you're only like a, like a choice list, you could have that. Anyway, back to minus uh, 5. <laughs> By the way, if I'm really, really I'm missing this because I've got a... Uh, it's going to be filling up my hard drive, this video is there. Uh, I might have to carry this on another time. So to change that into a blue shield icon with a question mark, what I'm going to do is, in the callback, I'm going to specify to it to change the icon. Now, little bit of a backstory. When I was doing this, I thought to myself, but if I ask the task dialog to change its icon when it's been created, won't it change the header background to match the icon? So if I choose the minus six one here, it's going to change the background to the yellow background. If I choose it to TDI information icon or TD error icon, it's going to remove the background altogether. Apparently not. Let me show you. If I send a message to this window using the HWND counter to hand up to the window, and I spend, send it the message tdm underscore update icon um, 
and I ask it to change the um, main icon of the task server. And I specify another icon that we've been using, so minus six, right? That's the warning icon. It doesn't change the header to yellow at all. It keeps it the same. How useful is that? Yes, but it also does change the top left icon and the task dialog icon, the, the taskbar icon as well to match it. But it doesn't change the actual background header. But how do we get that blue shield when it's not in the list? Like user account control does, which I believe is an, uh, there you go. There's an example of it. Well, I'll show you. Basically, how you do it is quite simple. Um, what have I gone on there for? No idea. I'm going to close that for now. If I load up in my Windows uh, 32 directory, and if I go to image res, and I'll find, oh, okay, don't want to do that. I've got to actually scroll it, stupid Windows. <laughs> there we go. Um, image res. Not that. Right click. Open resource hacker. Little, that's a little. This is a free program you can get online. If you go to the icon group section, um, you've got a basic shield icon here. By the way, you can't use that. If you try and specify number one, which is that's zero, that's one. You can't use shield. That'll just bring up the standard shield. I think. Um, just a bit of backstory there. Um, if you scroll through all these icons, you'll see that um, they're all the standard icons that you get in Windows. Number 78, I believe, is the standard shield. There you go. But if you scroll down to 104, you get the blue shield with the question mark. So, how do I get that into the task dollar? Very simple, actually. This make int w, I make it resource w a macro, actually takes a value for image res. But if you put a minus number, it takes all the standard icons from the task dollar API. So, what we're going to do is specify 104. And when I build that, user can control. But we've got one more problem. That icon and that icon does not match user can control. Because user can control, sometimes you might see, will have the proper shield with the blue and yellow. Because user can control's main icon is that standard shield. It's not the blue question mark shield. So, I've got to now figure out a way with you guys to change that icon and that icon to the UAC proper shield, but at the same time keep the blue question mark shield there. It's very simple. You can actually send the standard WM underscore set icon um, message to the window, and it will do that for you. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? We flip and shall. I need to first of all grab a handle to the image res DLL file so we can grab its resources. We can't use the standard make it resource W macro here because it's using it's out of context. So we have to put it back into context by loading up the module. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to make an image res handle. I'm going to use load library xw with image res .dll and now file and load library as data file. And also, don't resolve the references. That's going to go ahead and grab me a, uh, oops, I need a, code on, a handle to image res.dll. Now, I've got to use the, I could use the load icon here to load the um, shield icon out of there using number 78 that we saw. But doing that would mean that the icon displayed here would be using the 32 bit icon. Not the 16 by 16 icon. Sorry, not 32, but the, six, the 32 by 32, not the 16 by 16, because the standard icon size is 32 by 32. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is ask it by using load image to grab the 16 by 16 icon. So let's do that. I'm going to make a new H icon, and I'm going to call this um, shield small. If I spell shield right, yeah. I'm going to cast it to a H icon because it returns a handle value. I'm going to load image, W. And now, uh, oh, actually, sorry, yeah, uh, put image res there. I'm going to admit it there. And now I specify the make imp resource W, 78. Oops, 78. 
the type, I want to load an icon. And the size, I want 16 by 16. And the style, I'm going to go, uh, is it LD now? I've forgotten the size. Hang on, I've forgotten the flags for load image. Let me just quickly refer to the reference on Windows. LR, sorry. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, we need the default colour flag. And I believe the shared flag as well. So we might want to share this handle. Now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and copy and paste this core to grab that small icon and make a big icon as well for the taskbar. And this one, I'm going to specify for the size 0, 0, because I want to use the default size. This is just to allow Windows to use the correct size if it wants to use anything bigger than 32 by 32. So default size. And I haven't spot default. Right? There we go. So now I've got the two icons I want to use. So how do I send those to the window? Very easy. You will send message. HTMD. I want to send the WM underscore set icon message. Um, I want to change the there we go, small icon first. I was trying to remember what I was um, thinking. L param H shield small. And then same thing for the big one to send the change to the taskbar. And finally, I'm going to free that library out because we don't need it anymore. And we don't want to have memory leaks or other daft things like that. So, it looks like a lot of code, but it's not. It's quite simple. As I said, freeze a video, do some research onto it, and you'll understand it. Um, so now when I run it, ta-da! You may see in front of your very eyes. There's only one thing that I can't do in task dialog, and that is the put an image here, put bold text here, like it does on user account control. If I show you that, I can't spell today. You'll notice that there's an image here, and there's text over here. Well, I can do the text part, I just can't do the image part. I can't do the bold part here. That's not part of the API. I can't even make right align text here in the footer. I don't think. Hmm. I've just thought of a trick there. I probably could do if I use that RTL layout style. Because it's not actually showing any other text here. So we would not see that happening. And we could use the spacing to push them along. I wonder. Because on Windows Vista, that's not the um, RTL, is it? That's, by the way, the Windows Vista icon for Shield, if you want to. Interesting, guys. Very interesting. It might be possible. <laughs> but that's not important. You get the picture. So there you have it. User can control in the flesh. That's some undocumented stuff for you when you want to do task dialogues. As I said, there's a lot more you can do. Have a little experiment with it. Um, you've got the verification um, checkbox thing using the verification text. If I just put something like, don't show this again. Now what you get is a little checkbox. It's disabled because I haven't actually specified a return value for it. If I go ahead and do that, uh, what was it called? Verification doesn't really matter what I call it. And I, I can point it to that. It now should be enabled. There you go. Because it's registered that it actually has a return value to put it in there. Um, that's for radio buttons. That parameter there. Um, the radio buttons is specified by using P radio buttons. You can also specify custom buttons using P buttons. Remember, for each one, if you do that, you have to use C buttons and C radio buttons to specify the amount. That's the count of how many buttons there are, because it doesn't know. Um, you can't guess how many buttons you've chosen. I mean, suppose it could if you did some crazy mathematics. But remember, this is unmanaged code, and doing that could be messing around with the rays and sizes. You do need to know your sizes. You can't guess them. Um, so there you go. That's really pretty much it. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. I'm not the fan. I'm not. I'm not a great. Um, well, I am. A, <laughs> I've been doing programming now for about seven or eight years. 
uh, well, I say seven or eight years, it's really more like five, but the other two years are when I was starting off with website design. I'll be doing some more um, programming tutorials probably in the future, maybe even with Second Life, if you want to do like products in Second Life. Um, by the way, if you want to see about our Second Life videos, the Saturday Geeks, go to the Saturday Geeks channel on YouTube. Bit of a shameless plugging there. But yeah, I've been doing this for seven years, so I, I do know quite a bit about Windows now. I, um, I feel like I do anyway. It's probably a load I don't know. Um, but to do with the basics of um, front-end design when it comes to task dialogues um, and other designs, I, I, I like um, how Windows, how Microsoft themselves do their design for Windows. I know quite a lot about that. Um, I'm not a fantastic C slash C++ programmer, but I am a good C++ slash CLI and C Sharp programmer. So I like to mix and match them though. As I said, I could have done all this code in C. That, that is basically C, what you're seeing now. Um, I'm just using the .NET Framework version just to show that it does work in any language that supports the Win32 API. I believe you can even do this in Delphi. Um, I've seen some people do task dialogues in Delphi. So. And as I said, you can do this in C Sharp if you use interop, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, but yeah. So thanks very much for watching. As I said, I could have showed you a lot more, but I literally have been doing this now for 41 minutes. It's going to take forever to edit, and I hope to God I can get this video out for you tomorrow, which is going to be Sunday. I'm hoping. Please. That's the 29th. Um, so I'm going to work on editing this now. Uh, I'm probably going to be bored stiff doing it, but there we go. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day, week, month, and year, and uh, yeah. If you want any more like this, do say in the comments, do like the video, and um, there you go. Your very own user can control style dialogue, and you can mess around with those icons, by the way. You can even do the grey background with the warning icon if you want. You can do um, use the blue background. You can even use um, any icon in image res to specify a number that's positive, not negative. Mess around with it. You won't break it. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. I'm wondering why YouTubers seem to be getting loads of money and loads of views and loads of subscribers from doing absolutely nothing or, more to the point, rubbish. There's loads of examples I could give you, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to give you an example of PewDiePie, but unfortunately he does do something useful and that is gaming. And I do like uh, watching people play games.